In handcuffs, teachers held their heads up high on what could be the saddest day of their careers. The morale is low, but the camaraderie is high. The jail sentencing of 18 of their colleagues is mobilizing... Teacher strikes were once common in Rhode Island. From 1946 to the early 1990s teachers advocating greater salaries and better working conditions constantly battled local school committees by using the strike tactic. One of the longest and most important was the Warwick Strike in 1992. The two sides encountered difficulties in negotiating and as the exchange of proposals became deadlocked, a strike ensued. Jailing and national media attention did little to end the dispute. Commissioner of Education Peter McWalters explored the idea that a previous teacher contract would remain in effect until a new contract was ratified. This precedent not only ended the strike, but has kept labor peace in Rhode Island schools for more than 20 years. Teaching has always been a noble profession, one with high prestige but little pay. As far back as colonial times, and into the 19th century, most teachers were men. Over time, women began to be hired to teach, not only for their nurturing and maternal character, but also because they needed to be paid only a third of what men received. As urbanization and immigration changed education in America, unionization began the American Federation of Teachers was formed in 1916 with the aim of improving teachers' salaries, pensions, and working conditions. This horrified some people who saw teaching as gentle, white-collar employment without the need of unions. By the 1940s, the AFT began collectively bargaining with school boards across the country and threatened to strike when necessary to achieve their goals. Teachers who were once seen as too indispensable and too noble to engage in work stoppages began to realize that any gains in pay, benefits, job security, and working conditions were the results from the effort of their unions. In Rhode Island, the first AFT local was the Warwick Teachers Union, granted charter membership in September 1947. Teachers during the 1950s and early 1960s had less than adequate pay and benefits. They were ordered to perform duties outside of teaching and could be fired if a female teacher became pregnant. Women were paid less than men and teachers had no legal right to address their grievances. All of this changed in 1966 with the passage of the Michelson Act, which granted collective bargaining rights to teachers. One result of this was the increase in the use of strikes to reach contract settlements. In Warwick and other Rhode Island communities, teachers held a firm, no contract, no work position. Although striking was illegal, it frequently led to a resolution. The 1992 Warwick teachers' strike began when both sides disagreed on the terms of a successor contract that had been negotiated the year before. Teachers did not report to work for the opening of school. The school committee responded by filling for a back-to-work order. On Friday, September 11, 1992, 19 teachers appeared before Judge Paul Petarizzani. When asked if they would return to the classroom, 18 refused. They were fouled and competent of court in order to be held indefinitely at Rhode Island's Adult Correctional Institute. Teachers were fighting for items like class size protections, job security, and protections of special programs like elementary art, 
music, and science. The Warwick 18 were processed like any other prisoners. They were given body cavity searches, a medical exam, and prison clothing. They were then sent to minimum security. Negotiations were held in the next few days with little progress being made. By Monday, other unions around Rhode Island were threatening to shut down the state in solidarity with Warwick teachers. Several hundred teachers and their supporters were at the courthouse rallying for their already jailed colleagues and those about to go to jail. Fifty additional teachers were to appear in court and threatened with jail. Judge Perazzani set the tone when he said, Little is gained by the incarceration of teachers. He then asked State Commissioner of Education Peter McWalters to help bring the matter to a conclusion. The contract is expired and the succeeding contract is in dispute for parties to rely on the previous contract. McWalters proposed that if teachers returned to the classroom, they would be protected by the terms of the last expired contract. The exploration of this idea produced a temporary settlement. Teachers went back to work and were released from jail. I prefer the, the strategy where a contract stays in place until it is replaced by another contract in agreement. So that if the contract expires, uh, you don't do away with the whole contract. I was trying not to support the idea that when a contract expired, you went back to nothing. There was nothing. You had no rules, no agreements. So I would still argue for that. At this afternoon's court hearing, the 18 jailed teachers were released and relieved. We were totally right and we were up. The teachers' union says this is victory day for teachers and students. City Hall quickly became the scene of a support rally for statewide unions. Although there was joy that the 18 teachers were free, less than a month later, teachers were back on the picket line again as state Supreme Court overruled Judge Federazzani's decision. The court held the state's Labor Relation Board, not the Superior Court, had the proper authority to direct the parties to enter into an agreement or set the terms and conditions of employment as a condition to direct the teachers to return to work. The Labor Relation Board rendered a decision on November 10, 1992, in mandating that the previous contract was in effect and binding upon the parties. The Board observed that this rule would have a stabilizing impact on labor relations and would contribute to the maintenance of good relations between teaching personnel and school committees. This precedent has been used throughout Rhode Island and while there have been labor disputes since then, there have been very few strikes and no teachers have been sent to jail. Currently, Warwick teachers are working without a contract and hold the position that a previous contract is in effect until a new agreement is reached. Looking back, would you change your decision? I think after all this time, I made the right decision, and if I was faced with that situation, I would do it again. Others to some, heroes to others. I, 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 I do it again. Summer vacation is about to end for thousands of Warwick students. They go back to school tomorrow. Today, teachers entered their strike and reported to work singing songs of unity. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no...